Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today we're going to be looking at a little effect that I saw in one of my email that I received from Adobe. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. It kind of has a nice effect here. I'm just going to draw around this so you can kind of see. It looks like there is a glossy table right here and they've put some text on that glossy table and it looks like they have a little lighting going on in the background. And I know we've done similar effects to this, but we have not done the actual text effect with this. So if you're looking for something to use as a wallpaper or a background, this might just do the trick for you. So let's start over here, File, New, Blank File, and then you can see Landscape, and then my background contents are going to be background color, which in this case, as you can see down here, is black. I'm going to select OK, and you can see that I've started off with a black canvas right there. The next thing that I need to do is I need to get that lighting effect going. Now, the easiest way to do this for most people is going to be just taking the rectangular marquee tool, which is this fifth one down, and drawing a box. And there we go, drawing a box on the layer. Now, we want to paint this in a new layer. How do we do this? We go down to the dog ear icon or the new layer icon here, which creates a new layer. If you hover over it, it tells you what it does. You click on this and it creates a transparent background or transparent layer, I should say. Now, if I went in here and filled this with a color right now, it would be square and it wouldn't look like lighting. So what I need to do is I need to feather this so that it kind of has a round effect but we don't want to use the elliptical marquee tool in this case. And the elliptical marquee tool is underneath this. If you click and hold, you can see there's an elliptical marquee. Well, I don't want to use that. I'm going to go under my select menu, and I'm going to select feather. Now, I want to feather this quite a bit. As you can see, I've already played around with this, and I have 200 pixels set. Now, once it's feathered, we want this kind of nice round effect because what that's going to do is it's going to create a vignette of type right here. Now I need to find a color. Now I'm going to pick kind of a darker yellow color right here. And if we go back to this, you can see that they kind of have this darker yellowish green here and then they have a real bright color for the text. Go back to Photoshop Elements now. So we're going to fill this area right here with our foreground color. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to go over to Edit, and I'm going to use Fill Selection, and I'm going to fill the foreground color because our foreground color is this kind of dark green yellowish color. And then select OK. Now that's just a little bit on the bright side. It might be a little bit too bright for lighting. We can always go here and we can go to our opacity for that particular layer and we can dial it down a little bit to about 70, 60, let's try 65. That's kind of looking nice now. And then we're going to use our Command D, which deselects the marching ants. So we've got this nice look now. It's black and it's kind of got this lighting. Now, how do we make the black glossy table? Well, that's another layer. So let's click on the dog ear or down here, create new layer. Use the rectangular marquee tool. And about halfway up, we are going to draw a rectangular marquee. That is going to be our table. And we're going to go to edit again and fill our selection with black. So, so far, we're using some really easy tools, just our fill tools, our rectangular marquee tools, and our feather tool. We're going to select OK, and if you remember what we do, Command or Control D, we'll get rid of that. So now we have this lighting effect here. We have a black table. Now to make the black table look glossy, we need to put some text there and then make a little reflection. So let's grab our text tool, which is over here. There's our text tool. And let's pick a nice bright color for us to use. I'm going to use this brighter yellow color right here for the text. And you can see it showing up over here. I've got 100 points selected. And I've used Cooper Standard, kind of a nice fat font so that you can see it, as my default font. And I'm going to come over here and click on my picture. 
I'm going to type the word reflect. And I'll go ahead and use capitals. When I'm happy with approximately the right size, I can either hit enter or I can tick the green checkbox, which is right there. All right. Now, what I didn't do was I didn't properly select the justification, whether it was center justified or not. So I'm going to have to go here to my move tool and I'm going to have to move this. And what you want to do is you can use your arrow keys too. You want to move this approximately to the lower part of the letter onto the black looking table, if you can see what I mean here. This uh, text goes here and then it kind of bleeds over just a little bit. So now that we've got our reflect text here, I need to make a copy of this. And how I'm going to do that, you can either use the control J or you can grab this text layer and bring it down to the dog ear and it will duplicate as you can see it will duplicate your text layer. Alright now we need to flip this around to make it look like a reflection. We go under our image and then we go to our rotate and come over here and we just want to flip the layer vertically. We don't want to flip the whole thing because let me choose this one. This flips the whole thing and we don't want that. So let's use control Z to undo and go back to image, rotate. We just want to flip the layer vertically. So I'm going to select flip layer vertically. And as you can see, it flipped our text upside down. Now, easiest way to do this is use the arrow keys on your keyboard and move it down so the text is just touching. You don't want, want maybe either a bare, bare minimum of black in between or you want the letters touching right here. Now, we're just about done. It still doesn't look like it is three-dimensional. It still doesn't look like it's a glossy table. It really doesn't look like a whole lot right now. And that's because we don't have this faded. Now, on the full version of Photoshop, you can go in here and you can select a layer mask and you can go in here and you can select a gradient in here. Well, We don't have that option in Photoshop Elements. So what we need to do is we need to fool Photoshop Elements. How we're going to do that is create a transparent layer above this one. We are going to select our standard black and white tools uh, palettes I should say, the color swatches and the palettes and you can do that just by hitting D for default or you can click on this little icon down here and it will change it back to black and white. Now we go to our gradient tool and then we select the black to the transparent. Can you see those? Um, the checkerboard pattern that means foreground which is the black to transparent. I'm going to select that one. Now I'm going to draw a gradient on our text layer or our empty layer above our text. I'm going to start from the bottom here approximately where the L starts. I'm going to click and hold and draw a line and I'm going to stop it about at the top of the letters. And you can see the only problem is is that doesn't look very real because it's starting to make the rest of this look like a gradient as well. So what we need to do is we need to go here hold down the option key, go between our two layers until it looks like a figure eight, and click. And what that will do is that will superimpose this black to transparent layer above our text. And now we have a black background with what looks like a black table, some yellow letters above it, and then the reflection of the letters on the table. And pretty much that's it. Go ahead and move this. You can play around. I have two different ones here. One that has a little less lighting, one that has a little more lighting, and of course our web page which has this. It looks like on this one it's just a little bit less lighting on this one. But that's pretty much how Adobe did it and you can use Photoshop elements to get the same effect. So just remember to subscribe if you like this video and you want some more you can always check out some of my other videos 
If you want to stop and rewind and review it, that would be a great thing so that you can figure out how to go about creating all these different layers and the text. So this is Chucky, and I hope you enjoyed your time here on Digital Goulash.